Hello and welcome to another coaching video and in this one we have a gold cane versus a gold viego and don't worry no one will die on this first level one fiesta rampage that you're watching live as viego's laid out a base getting hooked but i'm going to showcase to you why i think this is absolutely always the worst idea now i know most of you in low elo and silver and, and gold and platinum even in diamond enjoy a good old-fashioned level one invade with your thresh and nautilus but there are ways around this that give you a lot more advantages than, you know, necessarily fighting it out. Now, the Viega obviously was very late to the game. He came out of the gates late. The Kane, on the other hand, now is flirting with this long invade. What's going to happen? He's going to be late to his blue buff. The Viego is going to be late to his red buff. If you see this as Viego, well, I don't think he saw it, but if you do see it, it's just better to trust that your team or someone will ward this, obviously, and then you can go ahead and start opposite side. If you're the Kane, there's no point to this. I have no idea why I would follow my team into the zone and not steal stuff. You could just go ahead and do this. Like right now, you could do this, you could do the trick and leave. Obviously, they didn't nerf that E, but you know, it's not really a big issue in this level one phase. I would much prefer to watch my team do that, go and make sure my red side is protected and start there in sequence down normally. This will then give me 10 to 15 seconds advantage over the enemy jungler, which of course in this ELO is the key to victory. Tempo, mastery, and control, and speeding up your decision-making. And that's exactly the kind of stuff we talk about in the gold course, which I'll link below on Vokai.gg, everything you need to get to Platinum. Really focusing on tempo, mastery, game plan adaptation, speeding up your decision-making, and effectively making your Platinum jungler, because to get to Platinum, you got to be a Platinum jungler. And obviously, that gives you the best opportunity to not get stuck in Platinum, because that's really... Players like this will maybe have a cheese strategy. They'll maybe do very, very well. But then what happens is you... It catches up to you and you get stuck in P4, you go up a little bit to P3, go back down to P4, because while you had a good run, you could still have a lot of gold tendencies, which is always what you want to get rid of. So the Kane sees the Viego go across this way. We know that he is very, very slow on that red side. The Kane, on the other hand, is now sequencing and will always sequence faster than the Viego. And, you know, we talk about this a lot in coaching with K-Mains. Just use the thing you do well and do it, right? Which is, of course, full clearing faster than most other junglers in the elos where are they gonna full clear anyway like should the viego full clear here no but will he yes so what can you do if you're the kane and you full clear faster than him you get on the map sooner and you can make a lot of cool plays now the viego in this particular case if he goes from the blue to the scuttle and kind of ventures into the river i'm going to be unhappy no just do the <laughs> good do the grump i've seen this with a kind of look Pull back to this just to deny the cane, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. The cane is, of course, going a little bit slower here in terms of, like, his eight, well, speed is definitely less. HP is definitely less because of the Fiesta level one. But now, effectively, we have the Akshan killing the Renekton, so we can go straight on down. We would have seen the Renekton, and again, if you're the cane and you see the Renekton detach and come back, if he goes very, very quickly out of vision down and up, you know, he watered the side bush. If he disappears hooking and it comes back from that direction you know that he watered the tribush, so you know basically that you're going to be seen. And I think that's something we have to always track if you're the cane. Now watch this from our perspective, right? He leaves, okay? He disappears. We ping it. The Akshan pings it. That's great. Now we're doing our crux. We're going to keep our eyes on the Renekton. Look where he came from, right? Always telegraphed. If he watered down here, he would have been gone, one, less time, and two, he would have come up from this angle. But because he comes back against the wall, I know you watered the tribush. Therefore, when I go for my scuttle crab, sir, I'm not gonna go through the tribush because I don't want to be seen, obviously. And manipulating vision and controlling vision in that way is so damn important, uh, even in Zelo, because now both junglers are gonna reach each other and go for the one-on-one. -on -one, and the Kane is just focusing entirely on the scuttle crab while the Viego unleashes DPS upon his soul. The Viego's like, but I can kill you, I beat you, as most Viego mains believe and most K mains believe as well. And you know, most of the time, as long as he hits the W, that is the case. And Vex says, thank you so much for the blue buff. Now, Viego sees Kane go down. He knows Renekton is dead. Should he go and fight for the scuttle crab just because he can beat the Kane? No. Just say no, Renekton is dead. I'm gonna leave and go and take this one. Because if the cane does this, travels across here and goes down here, and this is a fightable crab, I will have that itemization advantage and already I beat him 1v1 without items. So this just it's just better, right? I mean, it's just something that Diamond players do as well. I don't understand this die for crab meta. I mean, it's not, it's not season 10 or 11, guys. The crab has long since been changed and it's reduced experience in the first rotation. Die for the second one, the first RNG, but don't die for the first ones. So what the Kane is doing now is basically saying, okay, look, if I know the guy full sequenced up and basically died here, he's going for a second croc camp, and because the wave's going to be pushing, 
We're gonna have the Janna Shower begin. The Vega's gonna go straight on the Thresh. I'm gonna bait this with my E, go straight in here, hit that W, and now, of course, we'll snack the kill. Very nice patience and good synergy between the support and the jungle. That's always the, the good juice. Now, for some reason, he's undoing his, his benefit by just walking at the bottom lane. Don't do that. Don't do the dragon either. What? See, this, this is the problem. You make a very, very good and juicy play. You track the guy's sequence upside. We know, obviously, we had vision. He dies, he resets. He's going to go for uh, second spawn Krugs. He's going to have second spawn Raptors. We're over here trapping with a Thresh. Great, we got the kill. Now the guy's going to come out of base and go where? Probably to his Raptors, because this side will only spawn afterwards. Therefore, just go boom, boom, boom. You could, honestly, just do a full-on second rotation. Flex when necessary, but ideally, then you go back to base, come down to here, you'll have your blue, you'll get level 6 already before that, and then we can go ahead and just gank this before the Viego's in position and before the Viego is 6. Alternatively, you could just go back to base now, yeah, and then probably go top side here and then sequence all the way down. Cut into mid lane as necessary. Or, you can just go to your grunt walls, reset, and of course float this one, and then sequence down, do the cut, invade here, dive this. There's a, quite a few options now because of this play. The worst thing you can do is loiter. Hang around and do nothing on the bottom side. Hey guys, I'm gonna go gank you again. I mean, they know you're here. The Thresh is gonna flash in against the Samir of the Windwall. You're gonna hit the W, that's great, but it's a waste of his flash. It's, this is all a waste of time. There's no one in kill threat. What are you doing, son? Leave, leave. Focus on your experience. Don't hamper a great play with an equally stupid play. Now we're forced to go back to base. Now the Viego could trail down here like a bit of an idiot, but obviously he's not going to. He's gonna go for the Raptors, and then he's gonna slide onto the mid lane here. There's so much vision on the map here, which is why you want this scanner to be used as soon as you'd be going into the river. As soon as you'd be going into the river. And of course now he knows it's scanned, so he's, uh, sorry, warded, so he's gonna leave and waste his time thusly. Time wasting is the biggest issue in the Zelo. Because a lot of times you don't use the time, time wasting in a general term, not waffling and sitting still and making the wrong decisions, but hey, I have this advantage, I didn't use it. That's effectively a waste of time, right? I have a 10 to 15 second tempo advantage, I wasted it by doing something incorrect. And that always adds up very, very badly. Now here we went down to this, so we can go to this, this, and this, which doesn't make sense because we know the Viego's going up, and basically we're gonna say, look, it's an auction with a huge fat wave, Killing a crocodile. Hey, Akshan, by the way, Viego's coming. He's going to be behind. I'm going to take all of this and go down. Now I can maybe do something about this. Now I can maybe do something about this. We also have the red buff take that we could possibly sneak away if the Viego invests a lot of time here and also deny him potential counter jungling, especially if we cross mid lane and showcase what we're doing and he doesn't track us. So keep your tracking high, keep your directional pathing high. And you'll know exactly what to do in pretty much any situation. Because here you see this, you know he's going up. Why we go down here? Go the opposite direction and use his second red against him, knowing that he's going to be out of sync with it anyway. And this is a bit of a bait. We ping the Akshan, we say no. See, we should be pinging the Akshan. Akshan, Viego's going up. Akshan, Viego's going up. Don't do this. And now the Kane is going to go down to this, this, to this. And essentially what the Viego could do, now I don't want to say should do, could do, would do, but I do want to say... In this case, if he has any idea that this is going on, and they make a good gank here and get the kill on Akshan, tough gank, he could easily just go counter jungle you, you know? And if it's eight minutes, because all of this is delayed, he just gets a free Herald, which I don't want to do. I don't want to give these free things away. Viego actually just ends up going back to base, as I said. He'll be out of whack completely with the game. We could have still made this play. Krugs, Raptors, go on down to this. Now we could be stealing this, then we could go dive this. Depending on the matchups in the bottom lane, obviously. Now he's counter jungled, and I did this in the coaching session literally yesterday. We did it with, uh, who the hell was it now? I forget what champion it was. I think it was an, yeah, it was an Echo. It was an Echo. And basically, we had this exact same scenario. Champion Prothing upside. Red buff respawns. Guy does a dragon. We slap in here. We snack this. We go over the wall. We take the Scuttle Crab. Enemy jungle says, where's my red buff? Goes to the bottom lane, level 5. We're level 6. Boom, counter gank. Kill. Nice. Shove. Enemy jungler's confused. GG. Because we had tempo for the Herald play. And our solo lanes that we'd previously ganked were able to take control. And this was a plat 4 MMR game. So you're seeing the principles that get you to platinum and help you in platinum are already here. And the gold junglers who take control of this and are able to harness this power, woo, you have a lot of good fun. And in the meantime, in reality, we have here uh, our bottom lane dying to the Arlenian Soul Roam. And Thresh now has no flash and dies. Viego gets free cleanup. And Kane's like, but why? And... 
why is everything I've just said? He did not leverage his position properly and wasted the, the cool play that he made down here, which is pretty nice, to be honest with you. Hey, Red Crux Raptors, I know around 420, 440, this range is obviously, but obviously with the delay of about 10 seconds, you just add 10 seconds to it, right? It's not that difficult. It's not rocket science. Now, we know Viego was down here. So if you're a really fast Herald taker, you could have just done this already and moved into this zone. And then as he shows up, you just kill him. Now, that's only good if you know you win 1v1, right? And of course, they still have some tendencies here. He thinks, hmm, is the cane on the Herald? And which is why, you know, if you go ahead and do your red side first, now it's a risky play because the Viego is going to be thinking, is he doing the Herald? I think I should check before I do my blue side. In the meantime, the cane is like, hey, should I do the Herald now? Why is Viego on it? And you're just putting yourself in scenari scenarios where you don't really want to be. Now, Aurelian still rotates. Top has prior, obviously. So should Viego be doing this? No, because we know the cane is going to be on the top side. That much is obvious. So now the Aurelian still can move back here, but we have a 3v2 advantage. So we need to use that 3v2 advantage right now. We hit the W, we get the slow. We have smite, just finish it. We can hit the eyeball, hit the smite combo. Should be able to secure that really easily here. Yep, there we go. We snack that baby up. This will fall. Now we can go for the fight. Focus one target together. Renekton dies. Chase down the Viego. He flashes. The auction does the Bollywood step. Make sure we chase down. We get another slow. He presses Q. Doesn't matter. He dies. Viego goes back in and everybody falls. And now we can effectively go and say, yes, let's go ahead and snack that baby up. I don't know if I would use it right here. I feel like this is just a golden fusion that doesn't make a lot of sense. We don't need to elevate the game stage right yet. What I would prefer to see from the cane is listen. I know now, because you have no blue buff, that you did this stuff here, took red and cut in, and tried to coin up this herald, thinking I'm not going to go for it, but we all did, and we had the prior. Why don't I just go and take some of your camps? Plus four for me, plus eight for me, minus four for him, minus four, you know, like, we're getting that extra eight CS lead over him, and what effectively that means is we don't have to waste our herald here, because Akshan has control, Akshan's doing fine, we don't need to rinse this at the moment, let Akshan keep that control. Leave a ward here if you have a control ward. Do, 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 extract, reset, and then maybe we want to snowball bot lane. Maybe we want, we want to snowball the mid lane. You don't necessarily want to bust open and elevate the game state just yet when your top laner has that tempo control. And of course, once you take all of this, and Viego isn't able to get a gank off here, he's going to go down, and now you can match him as he goes down. Get the counter gank, get the gank off, get the 3v3, the 3v2, the 3v1. Now you can activate it, really punch it, counter jungle these cows when they respawn. Your bottom lane's gonna go here. You can fall back to this and, of course, join them. You see how that compounds so quickly, especially in this elo as we start to head to the platinum levels. And, of course, the platinum, if you can do this, you'll win a lot of games as well. So I'm not a fan of necessarily really punching it just yet. I hope they don't. I mean, I don't think they can anyway at this particular stage, but it's a waste of time, right? We're sharing experience now. We're not getting in gold. Or we're just trying to hit this turret down. Viego's going to show up and get these free camps. I would have much preferred snack, 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 reset down. Aha! And he's going to, like, that play that I described, I think, is a way better scenario. Because now Akshan is hanging around. Right, what do we have in pocket? 2,200 for us. 1,500 for Akshan. Renekton does, you know, a small aggressive thing. And sure, he dies. And sure, that's a tilted play. But it's not really something we necessarily want to invite, right? Do we now die to the Viego here as well? It's like we do. So the overstay equals the overdeath. It's unnecessary. It's twice now. We lost our advantage here for no particular reason. We lost our advantage here for no particular reason. Whereas we could have, well, we could have had maybe what? Four, five camp advantage over the Viego now, including some counter jungling moments. Missed opportunities, as always, is the way we go. But fortunately, we do get our form. We do get the Gore Drinker. And now we're going to go down to this side. This is live. This is 13.8. This is with the nerfs to the E. Uh, if you're not noticing it, you're not thinking about it, that's because, obviously, we're Ross and a Shadow Assassin, which is important to note. But at the same time, um, I don't think it's going to change much about the Shadow Assassin at all. Two second nerf and a bit of a movement speed nerf. It's fine. Like, you'll, you'll feel it in general when you have the quick, uh, when the quick turnarounds there, but... Overall, I think that's a good a hamstring on the mobility of the champion, which is what people are frustrated with. You know, you can have the damage, but the mobility was insane as well. Now, Lantern, Janna, Flash, Hook. Wow, there we go. That's much better than the, um, the, the Thresh we had. Well, that W was like when I first streamed many, many years ago, 2017, playing some Kane, and I think I missed every W. Right? That's why I can't stream and play. I just miss it. <laughs> it was such a meme. We won the game. I remember I still won the game. I streamed on YouTube, I think, one time. It was really fun. 
but uh, I missed every W. I was like looking at chat, looking at chat, just every W. That's what that looked like. But yeah, the thresh we had on the coaching channel yesterday, missed every single hook. Diego shows up here. We go straight to the dragon. Obviously, I'm a big fan of not a really Souls ultimate. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, I was what like I'm watching. That's why I kind of put the camera here. I'm like. Your team is dying and everybody's low. Can we do something about this? Maybe help them out? Why are we just sitting on the dragon? So, uh, wait for the heal. There we go. Thank you so much. All right. So, we could have done that first, you know, while hanging around. We could have just stayed here. See, this is... What we do is, my friends, is we have the Herald in this case. So, now we can shove, kill, clean up, and have the Herald activated. Kill this with our teammates. Snack this and go to do this. They collapse. We kill them. We can fall back to this side as necessary. You see how it's much better. And of course, once you've gotten the kill here, don't go back to the hero, the dragon and watch us and be like, uh-huh. <laughs> you idiots. You're dying. Oh, wait. I should probably help you. You don't, you don't want to end up in that situation. Now, the Vex is going to go in and rotate. Fortunately for us, we'll hit the knock-up on the Samira. We'll get that killer. A nice little auto-attack to finish. So that's very good. 516 now. Four Drinker doing its work. Rost is the king. Rost is the chad. And now, what do you do after this? If you are a silver jungler... If you're a bad jungler, if you're a beastly 1v9 jungler, yes, I want to get into the jungle, I want to ward, I want to chase, I want to fight, I don't want to overcommit, but I'm willing to take these fights. Like, I feel like we should be strong enough at this stage to want to go ahead and make these plays. You know, we've got the Thresh Lantern as well, but this is fine. That's fine. I like the behavior, because what if he goes topside? And especially if he goes topside, we'll go into the jungle here. I like the idea that, hey, we're going to go and invade this already and start to live with it. But, caveat. Know your champion, know the prior, know the resets, pay attention to item spikes, don't be an idiot. That's not what I'm telling you to do, I'm not telling you to run in here and die for the camps. I'm telling you, if you go for this, and Viego's by himself, and you can beat him 1v1 and no one else is on the map, I will kill you, I will take your camps, I will push this out, I will go here now, always thinking like this. I'm glad that he went for it, he looked at it, he thought about it, he flirted with it, and then realized, you know what, not good, I'm pulling the plug. It's, it's fine, it's worth that little bit of invest. Now. We could shadow back to the bottom side here like this, just to ensure we're able to get this turret. Also a good reason why I want that Herald, because now the Akshan has taken this, is now roaming the map himself, but can you trust your top lane as Puma to do this? I'd rather it be me, right? I'd rather it be me doing this, and controlling the tower taking. Now we're gonna have to go and hold the top side here. Do we have some action? Can we beat this guy one on one? Let's go. Yes, we can. We hit the W. That's nice. Now we gap close. We hit the Q there. We'll hit a bit of an auto attack. We want to make sure our Conqueror gets stacked. We uh, scan. Hit another auto attack. We'll hit another Q. We'll get the Gore Drinker activation. We'll then ult and we'll slide out after being in his soul. We'll hit that W and then we can auto attack and Q again. And then one more auto attack to finish. Very easy. It's almost like Renekton had no idea what to do. But the benefit of this style is obviously you get some solo wave experience. And uh, maybe you can go down here and take this now if you're feeling super juiced. However, 3.5k. My friends, this is where I might consider pulling the plug, but I will keep my eyes on the map. As I said, consider. Uh, depends on how for fun I'm feeling, to be honest with you. But in, re re in reality, no more than this, okay? You can push a little bit. The vision line is obviously compromised. We see people. We're looking at people the whole time, right? That's the thing. That's what I'm staring at here. Samira's bot, Jana was mid, Relinch also is mid lane, Renekton's dead. Viego's not an issue for me at all. I can then slide on down, get the RNG scuttle. You could do this as well. I think that's fine as long as you've got numbers. But now things are getting a bit risky in terms of, hey, I've got a lot of gold. I don't want to be too goblin where my team want to shove. And I'm like, Whoo -hoo, I really have to leave. So this is probably the maximum extended sequence you could expect to have. I might give you a bit of leeway to go do the Krog camp just for OCD, you know, quadrant clearing. But I don't think we really need that. We should just go back and buy a Black Cleaver in one buy. Is he going to stay out now even more? I mean, okay, yeah, okay. Because Viego's dead and because we see them on the bottom on, on the bottom side, sure. But I don't activate the Herald here. Yeah, this is not the play we want to make, yeah. Like, so we get the Flash, which is fine, but don't results based it. My inclination is at the very least base here or do this and then base, right? And now we can go buy Black Cleaver and Boots and one buy. And no, don't worry, I wasn't losing my voice again. Though it sounds like a little bit just a bit of a asthma, seasonal asthma. It's always fun, isn't it? Well, I mean, I have asthma all the time, so... It do be that way. Anyway, we leave the base. We have a Black Cleaver and Boots in one buy. We have here the second Herald, which now we can use for a proper push. Thresh should probably be careful. Uh, the Viego here, in, in terms of his jungling, 
you know, a lot of it, I've explained why the mistakes happen and obviously how the king could have overtaken him pretty easily. And a lot of it's just to do with full clear early, not giving up the scuttle early. The f level one Fiesta not paying attention to level one. Like everything that's happened to the Viego is compounded by his own inadequacy. And that's a tough pill to swallow because you might want to blame your bot lane. You might want to blame someone when you're four, six and one, but this is a four, six and one that I feel like has no respect. You know, like you didn't do anything to justify having four kills. Uh, the six deaths, you, yeah, your play doesn't just, you, you justify having that by being bad this game. Not every game, but this game, this was not so good. So he goes here to cover this. Now we see someone split pushing. And of course we're like, hey, can we collapse in on you, sir? Nope. Uh, here you can just take the wave and split push yourself. Like you can just take this and start pushing. I have no issue. I think you should honestly start to do this more as canes because this is a powerful thing that you have where you can now E and rotate very, very quickly. You will force people to hold and you can kill most people one if you want at this stage. That uh, strategy then kind of like letting it sit because look, no one's really thinking about it other than you in this stage. So we can push this really hard actually. You don't want to waste a Herald's Charge on this at all, but if there's like a crucial dragon coming up, and we're at that point in the game, you could look to use it just for a decoy, but I would prefer to decoy mid lane on that wave. However, if I have to use it here, I will, because if they want to fight you for this dragon, you can push this up and activate it. You'll get a charge here. You'll get a charge here. And honestly, with a good wave, you can inhib from that Herald if everyone's distracted and dying. And then obviously if 20 minute dings, you can go do this at the same time. So it's an interesting break even moment for the game, but definitely push that wave out uh, first. Janna hits the Glacial Augment. We have the dragon up. See, like, we're just wasting time for no reason. We could have pushed that wave out easily. There's no reason to activate the Herald, obviously, as I said, because they're not contesting and fighting. We'll back, take the Scuttle, take the dragon as per normal. Look for the bait so people show up. All right. We have Zero reverse Renekton on the top side. We have the ult from the Aurelian still going through. We hit a double uh, knock up there on the Janna. We go back line here as well. We're going to make sure the Samira dies. Now the Viego will start to get reset, so we have to be careful about that. Save your W for the Viego when he becomes the Auction. Hit the auto. And we queue through here. We obviously have Gore Drinker to be used as well. And we want to make sure we can avoid letting him get full resets, which we're doing our best uh, to try and handle. But obviously, it's tough when it's a Viego, <laughs> except the... Uh, fact of the matter is we're Rast and we're a better champion at this particular stage in almost every scenario. So that was nicely done, actually. A little bit maybe over chase here, so just killing the Aurelian Soul, but he knew that no one could do anything. And don't forget to press this button as much as <laughs> you can in those fights. Renekta now shows up here as well. Ziri has joined us. See, now we can activate this for a free charge, but we just leave and go to the red. It's the ADC's fault for sure, but obviously, again, now we're sitting at what? 2k gold? You know, you don't want to be sitting on 2k gold, 3k gold, 4k gold, and taking crucial game when he fights. The Baron's the thing that's spawning. I want to reset now. Okay, make sure this is shoved up. Make sure I've taken all of his camps. I do like this, though. It's a little janky, but I like it. Herald, get the turret, take all of the stuff. Now we can shadow this. Do we really need to base? No, we have two good items. But we have to be careful of their numbers if they send five and we only have three. Again, just things to be aware of. I don't want to fight here, ideally. There we go. See, this is a classic gold scenario. We talk about this. I have a specific mid-game section on the course, and I, man, I go crazy in that thing. I'm just, like, drawing lines everywhere. Because this happens so much. I just said it. We have three. We're shoving here. They have five. They're going to rotate over. We have two in our jungle. We have three camp pocket, two camp pocket. You're not going to win this fight ever, and now you're going to lose to them over here. Fortunately, you have an Akshan, but most of the time you will not. And then they can just go ahead and do this if you're all wiped and they have a vein or cast appear and something like that that don't die in the fight. Fortunately, Aurelian Soul dies and Smear dies, so they cannot do the Baron right now. But that again is a fortunately. Like, ah, oh, we made a mistake. Oh, look, uh, Vex is killing everybody. Cool. But again, results based. Don't want to put it on this. If you're in a Flex 5's game and you're in solo, you're like, okay, <laughs> thank you, Vex. Thank you so much for helping us out and bailing us out of that scenario. Could have been way, way worse. And we've all seen the throws of the bottom wave. It was literally in yesterday's coaching as well, wasn't it? We had this in the bottom side. I was discussing this. They had five. Oh, they had four. Uh, Diana left. We had five. Except this time, the Vladimir went in, but our jungler didn't. So they didn't actually get the trigger ball. Now, obviously, because Vex cleans up, we can go and do the Baron ourselves, which is, of course, the absolute right play in this particular case. Uh, death starts with the next thing. Uh, I mean, we could just Spirit Visage, Spirit Visage GA this. We could get really simple, to be honest with you. Really simple. Infinite healing. No one can kill you. Got a bit of magic for the magic component um, on the Aurelian Soul there. 
and we can obviously flex the, the GA to make sure we don't die, giving us some more AD. I do like that a lot. It's honestly a classic, and it's never died. It's always been a good build. It will continue to be a good build, this one. I, I think it's better than kind of overthinking it sometimes. Hey, it's a Ross game. Good, then build Ross, Ross, because as you can see, everything is good. Auction split in the top side here. We have the Baron. We're kind of shadowing. Thresh is out of mana. He's got to be a little bit cautious, I think. Chucking W's. Akshan's basing. He has no TP, so now it's probably a sign of, hey, snack this, snack this, catch this, and then base yourself. Let's see if he does just that. Yep. Yes, come on, son. You can do it. Yes. Yes. See, this cane right now, with a couple of these fixes, fixes like optimizations, right? He's just overseeing, overseeing, uh, he's overcommitting to certain plays. You know, like he's trying to do 200% when 100% was enough. Nice uh, W there. Akshan goes through. Very, very nicely done. Now we can fall back to this. Yeah, great. Like we didn't even have to base, actually. I said base because you don't need to rush this. There's no reason to force an Elder uh, Respawn to come up sooner. You don't really need Elder in this game. You can delay it by a few minutes. No one on their team is running through all of these wards and taking this without dying. And if they do, then you just end the game. Always worth thinking about uh, in these particular cases. So... Again, I do think, so sorry, I hit the mic. He's thinking a little too much about staying out with all of this cash money gold. And it can bite him, you know? The early game, those decisions can bite him. The loss of time can bite him. But a lot of great habits in this game that he can leverage for a platinum run. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. This, on the other hand, is basically not one of them because it's like, hey, guys. Now, if you're, you know, a cane main and you're... Level 18 at this point, full build, and sure, go ahead and do rasty things and kill everybody, but realistically, you know, you're sitting at 1600 now, and we've taken this, you could have just fallen back and taken all of that, collapse on this, cut this, everyone shoves this, 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 standard macro stuff, there's no reason to go and float with a 2v5, a 3v5, when it's just no point. Um, especially versus an Aurelian Soul and a Jan and a Samira, and sure, we can beat them, but all it takes is one bad play from us, and one good play from them, and... Things can get a little doomed. Now we go back to base, fortunately. So to finish some itemization, there we go. DD is done. Um, is he going for that? Can Punk Chain Sword? I, don't, I would not in this particular case. Uh, don't care about any of the healing. It's completely negligible. We will outheal them entirely. It serves no purpose whatsoever. It's better if you're, in, if you're in this case and you want to end, go your GA. If you don't think you need the magic resist, just go your GA. End of story, right? Now we're looking at a team with stuns, slows, Tamira, Viego. I mean, I, I, you can coin flip the boots. There's, these boots are obviously giga strong, but there's always here we want to go Grump Wolves if we want to join mid lane. If you want to go bottom lane, you can go Wolves Grump. However, the problem with our overstay, and this is an extension, is this, right? We went back to base. Our whole team was on the field looking to make a play. We were not in position. It's good that he's rotating, but he has to look at it and go... Is this even a player that we can deal with? Oh, that a really insult, but it's so disgusting. And we, like, we're, we're stuck backline fighting the Samira here. Uh, this could very easily be like a total throw. Yeah. And uh, we reduced 340 healing. You know? And you're going to be like, that's not so bad. I'm like, it's an amount, right? But could we not have just done more damage with the BF Sword, or could we not have resisted more damage with, with Spirit Visage, or uh, whatever it is? In this particular case, the Spectre's Cowl and things like this, it's not gonna change the nature of the fight. Like, no itemization that you have is gonna win you that fight at all. It was a 1v5. But the overstay here forces the delayed back here, which forces your team to be disparate from you, which once again gives them a 5v4 advantage. These are the problems that we have in these scenarios, and it's still it's prevalent in gold. And the same thing happened yesterday with the Wukong and the Diana. The Diana left, her whole team was here, and they got 5v4 engaged. Well, 4v4 engaged because again, the Wukong was a bit of a monkey, but imagine if the whole enemy team was on the same page, you would have had this exact same scenario happen, which is why I talk about this all the time, because you got to drill it into your brain. And repetition, repetition, different scenarios, repetition, different champions. Repetition, very important. It's how you learn, my friends. How you learn. Even when I was in school and teaching all the kids all the things about physics and science and ast astrophysics and math and whatever it was, 
you know, you do the example on the board, one person does one problem, and I'm, and I'm like, so you get it? Yeah, yeah, I get it. You give them another problem, say solve it, they have no clue, because they've done one problem, they have no repetition. And for macro in these kind of game scenarios, it's very good to look at VODs and coaching sessions and different games that you've played in for all the different environments that you have, but the decision-making matrix is consistent, right? But you just gotta recognize the moments of when to use what. Now we go deep, uh, deep here, we kill this Amir, we leave the E from the um, Aurelian Soul, but of course we are slowed too much. Viego kills us. We did kill him with Samira. I mean, not really a threat in this particular case. Our team is able to do a lot. We get revived thanks to the Akshan once more. That's okay. He's not really doing an amazing job team fighting. It's a separate issue entirely, but I think he's focusing too much on the Samira. I know he wants to deny the reset, but um, you can kind of sit with your team. Two ADCs, you can sit in front of them and kind of just make sure you're hitting the, the sustain and the disruption, but yeah, it's a Baron. Can do that they can shove this yeah so still well played his team played well off of him and used the lead that he gave them we now have elder Dra see this is what i'm saying like now elder dragon spawns what happens if that fight went a little bit longer and you guys lost they would go from baron to elder and now you lose so i like the idea of just kind of slowing down the soul point because there's no stress to take it and now this isn't even an issue for us, and we can just end. But obviously now it works out as well, because we can take the Elder and just end. But at the same time, it's still coming down to a team fight, And all it takes is one bad play. Flash! Hook! Chain that. Get him, 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 get him. Everyone should work together. Now he's out of the picture. Zone the rest of them. He's out of the picture. Zone the rest of them. We go on the Aurelian Soul, who's a big question mark. He goes backline here. Now we're turning back into our team, and I feel like we didn't have to do that. I feel like we were strong enough to kill everybody there entirely. Um, I feel like this hook and shove out of the of the Viego meant that we could go deep here and just absolutely disrupt hugely. And I feel like the biggest problem is we went for this item. Now, I hate this item in general, but if you just went for GA, you just went for a Spirit Visit. I mean, look, let's face it, in this particular game, the Aurelian Soul is starting to do a lot of damage. The Magic Resist and the healing from Spirit Visage will give you more than enough confidence to do what you need to do in the backline here. And the GA, if you went for that instead of it, yes, you're losing the MR, but you have that stasis re uh, and revivability plus the added AD ratios to use. So this is like splitting the difference and you don't have magic resist and you don't have stasis if you follow. And it's like, well, you reduced 759 healing. I know you can't see it, but it says 759. Like, pfft, really? It doesn't change the nature of that fight at all. But overall, I liked it. We, just, we went deep here. We could have committed a bit more. Well played, though. Guys on the right path will definitely climb uh, with this kind of stuff. Obviously, all of the fixes and optimizations of these tendencies and all the strategies you need are available in the goal course. And if you want a personal touch, what am I coaching? I'm available to help you do that as well. Uh, hopefully, this video for the free uh, information is enough to help you see a few things in your own gameplay. I just want to keep giving people value on this channel so you can learn in all the different scenarios. Hopefully, you enjoyed and learned something. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.